When you invest, there's serious tax savings to be made by using different tax structures or different tax entities like trusts, investment bonds, companies, your super fund, and your personal name. But the important thing here and the thing that will make you the most money is choosing the right investments to put into the right structures because each of them have different benefits. For example, companies have a flat 30% tax rate. And when you invest into Australian shares inside a company, when those shares pay frank dividends, because there's a tax credit attached to the company tax rate, which is pretty much 30%, the investments actually grow without you paying any further tax. But the downside of companies is that companies don't get the 50% CGT discount. And so having higher growth investments inside a company means that you pay higher rates of CGT. So going through each of the available tax entities in turn, your personal name is a great structure for holding an investment property, at least one investment property, because that utilizes the tax, uh, the te land tax free threshold that you get. Every investor can own up to about $800,000 of land in their personal name without paying any land tax. And given that land tax is about 1.6%, depends state by state, but 1.6% in New South Wales, there's a serious saving to be made there. But as you accumulate more properties, looking at trusts can start making a lot of sense because with a trust, you can distribute capital gains to other taxpayers. And so you can distribute, say you make a million dollar gain on an investment property, then you get uh, a $500,000 discounted gain after the 50% discount. You can, instead of paying that all out to one person, you can pay it out to two, three or four people, meaning that they get a lower accessible income and a lower tax rate applies. Also with trusts holding high growth shares can be beneficial because with the high growth shares, again, you can distribute capital gains to multiple taxpayers. But investment bonds are probably the best place to be holding high growth shares because with investment bonds, if you hold the shares for 10 years or more, you don't pay any capital gains tax at all. Now I get that this is complex, don't get me wrong, and this is the sort of stuff that you probably should be seeking out some good advice on, but to give you a practical example of how this works, if you've got uh, US and Australian shares, if you hold them all inside a trust, then you can distribute as per. But if instead you were to put, say, the Australian shares and put them in a company, the US shares and put them in a bond, because the bond uh, has the CGT discount and because US shares tend to have a higher growth element, that the overall tax is going to be reduced. Then in the company, you've got the franking credits and the lower growth rates on Australian shares compared to US shares, meaning that the overall tax is gonna be a lot lower on exactly the same investments. Being smart with this stuff makes a really big difference to your investor bottom line.